The Book of Disquiet by Fernando Pessoa. So, Fernando Pessoa, you might be aware, was a literary titan of the 20th century, both in the world at large, but especially within his home country of Portugal. He was a poet who had the interesting habit of attributing much of his writings to various alter egos which he created in which he referred to as heteronyms. Now, the Book of Disquiet, which I think is the work outside of Portugal that his reputation primarily rests upon, uh, is attributed to one such heteronym named Bernardo Soares. Now, the uh, fictitious backstory for Bernardo Soares is that he was a uh, very, very introverted and kind of reclusive bookkeeper who um, just tabulated his various musings on whatever in diary form. And that is what the Book of Disquiet presents itself as. Uh, it refers to itself as a factless autobiography, but I think it would be more fitting to refer to it as a factless diary, the, the, the diary of a man who never was. Um, and I went into this book with high hopes because, I mean, reclusive bookkeeper with literary sensibilities and a fatalistic flair, that's literally me. Uh, so I went into this book like expecting to adore it because a lot of people do. I've seen a lot of acclaim uh, given to this book and I and I went into it wanting to be one of those who who praise it. Uh, because again, I, it, it, it seemed like it was just going to fit me like a hand in a glove. Um, but unfortunately, that did not end up being my uh, experience reading the Book of Disquiet. Um, so just to not to pussyfoot around with it, the Book of Disquiet is, uh, with no contest, uh, the worst book that I have read so far this year. And beyond that, this is really just one of the worst books I have ever read in my life, period. Uh, this book I really detested reading. Um, the, it's very rare that a book uh, is able to engender the level of disdain within me that uh, the book of Disquiet did. Uh, so it, it, it got a reaction, I'll say that. Um, but yeah, this book I just thought was absolute crap. The content of this book, almost without exception, is pure twaddle. Uh, and the manner of its delivery is, at times, uh, just nothing less than an absolute butchery of language. Um, this reads like sad boy incel poetry um, by a man who has an incredibly... Uh, high superiority complex, um, but has no justification for having that whatsoever. Uh, this book uh, is one of the most monotonous things I have ever read, and like if this was a struggle not to DNF. So, as I said, the book presents itself uh, as uh, the, the, the diary of Bernardo Suarez. Uh, and so there's really not much in the way of, like, a story here other than just the barest thread of narrative of this guy living life and kind of watching the world go by and um, just living inside his head because that's really what the, the main thrust of the Book of Disquiet is. Um, it's about living in the real world as little as possible and living within your own mind as much as possible. There's so much in this book about dreaming and um, Fernando Pessoa, or really I guess I should say Bernardo Suarez uses the word dreaming kind of loosely, not just to refer to like nocturnal scenes um, when you're literally dreaming, but like t about like invented imaginary scenarios that you concoct and kind of find fulfillment in, kind of escapism into your own consciousness. Um, that's what this book is all about, because that's really what the, the, the narrator does. He just kind of daydreams his way through life. 
um, and imagines all kinds of crap and writes it down in the most cringeworthy manner possible. Um, this book was embarrassing to read, honestly. It, 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 it engendered in me a level of secondhand embarrassment that I don't think any other book that I've ever read has been able to. Um, and, you know, this may be just like one of those books that I read at the wrong time in life. It's, it's like The Catcher in the Rye, you know. They say uh, you have to read that book when you're an adolescent or you may not like it. Um, I think uh, something similar holds true for The Book of Disquiet. I have no doubt that if I had read this when I was 16, edgy as hell, angsty as hell, um, listening to an ungodly amount of Breaking Benjamin, there is a good chance that I might have thought this was like the greatest book ever written. But thankfully, those days are long gone. And seeing this with the perspective that I now hold, this was just laughably bad. Um, it is so freaking monotonous. It's like it's like just reading the same thing over and over and over. Um, and half the time, it's literally just gibberish. It really is. It's like hyper poetic, um, just hollow verbiage that says basically nothing, or at least nothing comprehensible. It's just him whinging about this or that and about how he was not cut out for life in the outside world and the only solace he is able to find is within his own mind and blah 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 it's just that over and over just sad boy horse shit that just got so unbearable to read after a time um it, it's a pretty lengthy book i think it's like uh it's right around 500 pages long but it really is just like the same sentiments just hammered home over and over again and again it's so like you can tell Fernando Pessoa is definitely a, a poet primarily uh, because this definitely has really really highly poetic sensibilities but it's like too much it's too much the the way that he uses language is just ridiculous. Um, it makes no sense at times. There's a part of this when he describes uh, the whitely white moon. That's right, the whitely white moon, as well as, as he uses the phrase human humanity. Uh, it's 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 just bullshit. It is. It's just. It's it reads like incel poetry. It's it's dangerously close to like some kind of basement-dwelling, neckbeard kind of persona who just thinks that he's better than the rest of humanity, but he lives like the most pathetic life possible. Um, and, you know, like I said, um, I, I thought that this was going to really be reflective of me reading this because, I mean, reclusive bookkeeper with literary sensibilities and a fatalistic outlook like that. That literally is me. However, I take great pride in saying, in being able to say that I have never in my life written anything <laughs> even approaching as cringy and embarrassing as the Book of Disquiet is. It is truly um, one of those eye-rolling things I have ever read. Um, uh, just to go ahead and rate this right up front, I'm going to give the Book of Disquiet a D-. minus. The only reason why it doesn't get the, the whole, like, irredeemable F rating from me is because there are occasions in this, and, and I mean very few and far between, where uh, Pessoa, or Soares, I guess, um, is able to say something that's genuinely insightful, that actually has some kind of heft to it, that actually says something, uh, says something perhaps valuable. There are sporadic instances of him actually talking about something concrete, something real, not just lost in his own abstract imaginings that are completely untethered from even just the basic rules of grammar. Um, there, there are times in the book where he is able to say something cogent, and those are really the only things that, that keep this book from just getting the full F rating from me. 
Um, it's it's not a good book, y'all. I don't think. And you know, I, I I'm anticipating some heat down in the comments of people saying you're just not refined enough to appreciate um, the the book of disquiet. It's just beyond you. You know what? Maybe so. Fair enough. But I would rather be as I am and not revel in cringy wanna be profound poetry uh and i'm gonna throw up some quotes for that last word poetry uh rather than be whatever i would have to be to appreciate this because this was god awful uh this this is again i've never had to or rarely have i had to struggle not to dnf a book like i did this because uh, this was downright painful um and i would urge all the people out there who see something in this book uh, to reconsider your evaluation of it. Do not make the mistake that many people do of confusing abstrusity for profundity, uh, because that is all the Book of Disquiet is, almost. Without, almost without exception, it is just abstrusity, just rambling nonsense um, that is just, again, embarrassing to read. Um, and yeah, just don't make that mistake. Don't confuse abstrusity for profundity. Um, and yeah, th don't, don't read the book of disquiet if you haven't. Uh, it's, it is not worth it. This, I don't know how this has the reputation that it does because again, this was just cringe inducing reading. Um, yeah, so the, the, avoid this like the plague if you, haven't read this already, but if you have read the Book of Disquiet, let me know down in the comments what you thought about it, whether you have agreed or disagreed with what I've said about it here today. Um, and like I said, if you haven't read it, don't. It's not worth it. It is just, just, just gibberish, basically, um, and just cringy, embarrassing gibberish as well. Um, just, just, just don't read it. But yeah, I'm anticipating some heat down in the comments uh, on behalf of this one because this is a, this is a sacred cow. But I've never been afraid to tip sacred cows. So yeah, Book of Disquiet is this book sucks hard D minus. Uh, but anyway, if you have enjoyed anything you've seen or heard here today, remember to hit that like button, and subscribe. I would really appreciate it. And until next time, peace.